Hi, I'm Wade from Thoroughbred Diesel. Today we're going to be installing a 68 RFE RevMax Zero Flex Billet Towing HD High Performance Valve Body. One of the failure points inside the 68 RFE transmission is the valve body. The valve body failure modes, they've been talked about in a lot of different, uh, a lot of different circles or whatnot. So um, the, tor the valve body is uh, in stock form allows for cross leaks. Uh, those cross leaks will cause uh, line pressure where it shouldn't be, loss of line pressure, all of the things, torque converter lockup problems. So one of the pieces that goes a long, long way into in solidifying or correcting all of the problems that are in the 68 RFE inherently is an upgraded valve body. RevMax's upgraded valve body, this is the, like we were talking about in the intro here, this is their aluminum billet zero flex towing and HD valve body. This valve body we feel like is one of the best uh, starting points for you on your 68 RFE journey when you are going to be, well, first off, when you want to just correct one of the problems that is inherently comes from with a 68 RFE in stock form, and then you guys that are working into uh, working towards performance on your 68 RFE, you got to start with a valve body. That's going to be the first thing for you. Uh, think you should consider a Rev Max valve body. So today we're going to be installing this Rev Max valve body on our 2018 Dodge. We're going to be going through a lot of different things inside of here. We're going to be talking about uh, OE filters on the trucks and just correct installation of the valve body. This truck we're going to be putting it on. This is going to be a no-tune truck. So we're going to start out with this truck with no tuning on it, just a straight up Rev Max valve body. And then as the truck progresses, we're going to be adding things along the, along the line in other videos. But for right now, in stock form, we're going to be correcting what's wrong with this 68 RFE by putting in a Rev Max valve body. All right. So, um, you know, just like anything electrical, we've already uh, unhooked our battery cables here. So we're clear to go on that. Uh, before I drop the pan and let the transmission start draining, I like to do the uh, connector, the cylinder wood pack connector on them, and it will actually slide past. Uh, so to undo it, you just there's a red lock uh, locking tab on it. Uh, you just pull it down, and then if you go above the white bail trip here and pull down, there is a catch right there and you push the catch towards the transmission and pull down the bail trip it'll actually sneak past the the shift linkage there and then pop itself right out so you can unhook it from the transmission and be clear of that so it can drop straight out so there's that done and then i start taking the bolts out of the transmission uh pan and just get ready to drop it the 68s are just like every other transmission they're on at such an angle so you want to drain it from the back of the pan uh, so I'll just go through and start getting all the excess bolts out, but I'll have my pan uh, ready to go. Uh, Adam got my light in here, but we'll we'll get our pan closer up. So as you go through and take your pan bolts out, if you get some drain, uh, you're ready there. So we're going to just go through here and start getting our transmission pan bolts out and get ready to drain our transmission. All right, so we taking um, all except for four or five bolts out on our transmission pan. I just take a dead blow saw face hammer. I just tap around the pan. I've already got it going here, but we wanted to cut in and show it and tap around this pan. The pans on 68 suck. Seems like they're nothing but trouble, but I'll let it drain as I go. I know you guys have seen us do this before on other transmissions and whatnot. We got a, this garbage can lid that we use uh, it's wide, so it catches all this stuff. So just take your time here, let it drain, take the transmission paint off. I'm sure you've got, everybody's done this before. So, uh, but that's a good trick on the 68s where the, they've got these funky pans on. Just a dead blow hammer, tap on it real soft, leave three or four bolts in it, and drain her as you can. And we will come back once we get uh, the paint where she's done draining and you've got it stable. Um, you can go ahead and take your bolts out, bring your pan down, and just turn your pan over inside of the, the uh, drain. All right, so we've got the uh, transmission to where, you know, we've, I'm, I've monkeyed around with the trans pan now. Just about got 
enough of the, of the fluid out of the pan that we can drop the pan. And I'm going to get Adam to help me here because remember, folks, friends don't let other friends get covered in transmission fluid because that makes for a bad day. And it's Thursday right now and it's Masters Week. And I just I just don't want to have it be in a bad mood on Masters Week. So on Adam's side, he's got one bolt left. I've got one bolt and we're going to drop them together. And then we're going to take the pan down at the same time evenly. Thanks for unscrewing mine as far as you did. That's what I was getting ready to say. <laughs> I guess I let your three quarters away in there, yeah, didn't I? Yeah, good All right, so we're just going to drop the pan straight down, keeping it good and even so we don't have to wear any transmission fluid today. I'm on uh, the line. Yep. Yeah, yep. And then just straight on down, just like so. Yeah, I got it. You can go ahead and drop it. Yeah. So I. Uh, I'm going to let that sit for just a minute like that because I like to dump the pan out to where I can see it. But I'll, dro I'll drop my pan down just a little bit more. And there we are. Okay. And while that's kind of draining just a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and go over to my toolbox. We're going to act like I'm going to my toolbox, going to my toolbox, going to my toolbox, going to my toolbox. And what am I getting out of my toolbox? I'm getting a T25 torch because we are going to pull the sump filter while this is draining. T25 torch screw right there. Go ahead and loosen it up. Just because I'm in a hurry for the shot. The only reason why I'm monkeying around with this while it is still draining, but Go ahead and pull this filter, your sump filter, just pull straight down on it. Be careful of your angles of everything. Now the pump, you're gonna get a little bit more. Oh, there it is. So now we're gonna let that drain for another minute or two. And then I'm gonna drain my pan out and turn it over and get it cleared out. And then we're gonna go after the spin on filter. Next, we're going to go ahead and remove the spin-on filter on these. Remember, the spin-on filters on the 68 RFE Dodges have got the uh, plastic nipple in them. So what all the work that you do with this, uh, make sure that you're aware of that and that it can break uh, and all the things there. So when you go to get that filter off, just make sure when you're working with it to try to work straight up and down. <laughs> so loosen it up, let it drain for just a second, and then you can spin it on out. Um, and then while we're waiting on that to drain just a little bit, uh, I'm showing you here to remove the valve body. I think there's six, yeah, uh, 10 metric bolts around the top of it. Three here, four, five, and six. Those six along the outer edges, that's what's gonna hold the valve body in. Then we're gonna pull it straight down. Remember, we've got our electrical connector uh, on the, from the solenoid pack uh, removed. So we're ready to, uh, we're pretty well ready to drop the valve body now but since i've already started talking about it and because of the magic of movies here i'm just gonna go ahead and spin this filter off and go against everything i told you remember friends don't let friends get covered in transmission fluid but sometimes they do when they're when they've got a cameraman waiting on the shot so again let her drain a little bit more and uh, then we'll come back and we will take the valve body down so we showed you all the six, and I call them 10 metrics. They're eight metric bolts uh, around the valve body. Remember, at the, front of, of the, uh, at the front of the transmission, one, two, three at the head of the valve body, and then four and five on either side, and the very back at the back there has got the sixth one. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to loosen all these bolts up just a little bit, and we are going to walk away from this for the day and we're gonna let that continue to drain. Um, so we're gonna call this a day. We're gonna come back tomorrow. We're gonna pop this out and uh, uh, we're gonna let a little bit more of it drain then. But for right now, the way this is draining, you're just gonna get covered in it. If you don't mind that, go on and take your bolts out, bring your valve body down. For us, we got clauses in our contract. No, I'm just kidding. We ain't like that. Our mamas didn't raise no wimps like that. So we're going to just let that drain for the night. We're going to come back tomorrow where it's a little bit drier so we're able to show you all uh, properly how to get the valve body down. And then we will see you tomorrow. We are back. Something I wanted to uh, make mention of, you know, we said we were going to walk away from this last night. Um, with the 
uh, spin on filter off. If you allow this to drain quite a, for a long, long time, you're going to get more drain back out of the converter. Uh, so it's going to cost you a little bit more money and fluid going back to get it right. So that's just something to make sure that uh, I, I say, because I know a lot of guys will watch that and they'll they'll see, you know, we say we're going to walk away from the valve body and, and you know, let everything drain out so we just don't get drowned in it. But uh, we've already um, loosened up all of our um, all of our eight metric bolts and we're going to just start bringing them down and then Adam's going to go over to the pasture side here in just a second if he can get his hands on trans on the valve body and we're going to drop it together nice to have somebody to help you um, the valve body's not crazy heavy but you're going to get some residual fluid there's a little bit of rocking that you're going to have to here you go man. yeah there's a little bit of rocking that you're going to have to do on the on the valve body as you bring it straight down. Um, nothing above you here that you're actually going for um, when you're bringing the valve body down. You just got to make sure you keep something in your drain pan for drop bolts. I got it. All righty, so that's five of them out. We just got this one left for me. Um, yeah, for some reason. Now you're going to get a little bit of residual fluid when you drop this valve body. So when you're bringing it down, again, just to... I'm going to try to come same space, same time with everything because you're watching out for your solenoid pack that's up there and then your park paw at the top here. So we've got our valve body down. We're just going to set it there and let it drain for just a second. And then we're going to cut back in and we are going to show you the valve body on the bench. All right. So we've got our uh, stock valve body out and we're getting ready to transfer over our solenoid pack to our RevMax valve body. Before I start that, the first thing I want to do is I want to look at the gear position or the parking position uh, between the two. So obviously your truck's going to be in park when you brought it out. So uh, your parking position should be the same. So like, let's just say it came from RevMax and it was in the reverse position there. Uh, you just want to make sure you get to park. So you want it lined up, you want the selector, uh, this moves with the whole assembly that should be all the way forward um, for lack of a better word so yeah anyway you just want the gear selection lever to be lined up to where you came out just like the stock one so now what we're going to do is we're going to work on getting this solenoid pack transferred over to the uh, rev max valve body be real careful with what you do with this because you are going to be sitting this on the connector if you've got a fancy bench or something to where you can sit it on that. Go ahead. Um, what we did, there are 15 bolts, T25 Torxes that hold the solenoid pack on. Um, some of the instructions that we saw out there show it to be 14, it's actually 15 bolts. Thank you for Adam for seeing that with us. Um, so we're gonna count them off here. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, sorry about the backwards way of counting. We painted all of those white so you could see them if you need to stop your video there. I know this one's already got a little bit of trans fluid on it and wore it off, but uh, there are 15 bolts. So these are T25s. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take them all out from the solenoid pack and get them ready to move over. You will be using these bolts back uh, between the two. So, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go through and I'm going to take all the bolts out and then we're going to come back when we flip it over and remove the solenoid pack. All right. So now we're going to flip it over and to go ahead and remove the solenoid pack, be real careful about this. The solenoid pack on these valve bodies has got a, has got some plastic legs down here and you don't want those to break off on you. So we're going to go ahead and separate the solenoid pack from the valve body, like so. So just make sure when you come straight up, see your little plastic leg here that's on this. This gasket is reusable, so you don't, don't need to do anything. You're just taking it right over to 
the new valve height and sitting it down as correctly as you can. Everything up and letting it focus down. There are alignment pins as well, so you will get it lined up there into this recess. So now we will want to flip the valve body back over and I'm going to get our stock valve body out of the way. At this point, this is going to be your core valve body that we are going to be requiring back for core. And just show you something on this, on these, this solenoid cover, we talked about this being um, three times as thick. You can see how flimsy this plate is. Uh, you can see how the channel plate on the stock body is valve body is much thinner. You can see why we talked about deflection or warpage in this valve body causing so many problems with the hanging of the solenoids or the valves inside of here. You can see it's a pretty flimsy piece. Um, the amount of heat and pressure that goes through this can be problematic. So we're gonna get it out of our way and we're gonna bring we're gonna bring the king back over here. And we've got everything ready to go. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna very simply just keep a hand on the solenoid and turn the valve body back over. Keeping our hand on the valve body, such as so. everything there. Now we are ready to put our 15 bolts back in and then we're going to torque these down to 55 inch pounds. That's 55 inch pounds. All right, once you get your solenoid uh, pack on, you just want to snug it down at first and then I just look around and make sure that everything is flushed down. There's two alignment pins on the solenoid pack, steel ones that go back into the valve body and then there's the plastic leg that we talked about back here. I didn't talk enough about the alignment pins. So uh, just make sure that you've got those. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get our torque, uh, torque wrench out, set it to 55 inch pounds, 55 inch pounds and start torquing. And the way I torque, I'll start in the middle and just kind of zigzag my way around um, and then just go back over it uh, a couple of times and just check everything. So I'm just going to start um, kind of here in the center and just keep working to the outsides and kind of around and then torque everything down to 55 inch pounds. So we're ready to start uh, doing our prep work for our, to put, excuse me, our valve body back up in the transmission. The uh, first thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure there's not, you haven't got any large obstructions or dirt on anything in the mouth of the spin on filter, or just anything. You're just looking for anything that just jumps out to you, big hunk of mud that you got in your uh, insulation. Just get everything clean. And then what you want to do is the uh, stock paint. If you had a stock paint on here, it was Permatex. So you've got to go around and get that surface cleaned up. I like to clean up this surface right here for our manifold, uh, for the fluid transfer. And then when we do our new internal filter, the new internal filter, we, we suggest you change your internal filter and make sure that I'm clear on that. We also suggest that you use the genuine Mopar or Dodge internal filter. It will come with a new uh, stem seal, I'm gonna call it, for that filter. That stem seal can be a daggone bear to get out. I mean, you can do it a couple different ways. If you wanna try to cut it and piece it out like that, you can. You just gotta be really, really aware of the case here. I use, we've got a, uh, we've got a, a pick set. And what I do is on this pick set, I'm gonna get out of your way. I wedge it in this corner of what I'm gonna call the manifold block, the little transfer block. And then I use that, which is good leverage to put on that seal and pop it out. Now I know you guys aren't probably gonna have that tool, but you can see what I'm looking at there, kind of a 45 degree angle tool. I just pop it in there and pop that seal out. So we're gonna put our new seal in. We've got the rest of our case uh, ready to go. So I'm gonna pop this seal in, and then I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna get ready. I'm gonna bring my, uh, I'm gonna bring my valve body up.
All right, so we lost audio here at this portion of the video, but what we're talking about here is checking both of your uh, fluid supply orifices on the valve body to make sure that they are clear and that you have lubricated the seals as well. And then we show you to make sure that the selector shaft uh, links up with the uh, shaft inside the transmission. So now we're just installing the valve body. Uh, remember there's six mounting bolts here and you can see Adam and I actually putting those uh, back where they go. Uh, the six mounting bolts, as you're putting those up, you're gonna wanna make sure that you take the threads of them up evenly. Um, if you get the valve body in a position where you have more tension on one side than the other, uh, you can cross thread it or, or whatever that is. So there are six of these mounting bolts in total. So we're just uh, easing around the valve body right now and putting them back in. It's really, really nice to have another set of hands with you to install all of the bolts into the valve body. Now, when you go to torque the bolts down, this is one of the very important parts of the install. If you do not get the valve body torqued down correctly, it can affect your sealing of the valve body and will thereby affect your fluid transfer inside of the valve body uh, with the transmission. So getting these torqued down and getting the torque applied to them evenly is very, very important. And as we torque these up, we're actually gonna do it in a crisscross pattern. That's gonna help us get an evenly applied torque throughout this. And then your torque spec on the valve body mounting bolts to the transmission are actually 110 inch pounds. So 110 inch pounds to torque these down. Uh, spin on filter, we want to talk about the nipple for these spin on filters. This is another product that, the, uh, that RevMax offers and definitely something that you need to upgrade while you've got your valve body down if you haven't already. So the stock Mopar spin on filters come with this uh, plastic nipple. I don't know why. I have absolutely no idea why they wanted to go to plastic on this. Um, they break, uh, if they loosen up and the filter is loose, you're gonna have a, a catastrophic damage to the transmission, all the daggone things. So avoid catastrophic damage, get rid of the plastic nipple that's in these spin-on filters. Now, half inch Allen in the center of that. This is on the new style filter and you can loosen this up. Mine wasn't that loose. Trust me, I've already loosened this and what we did to loosen it was put a ratchet in the vise, put the filter on there and then turn it with a strap wrench so we didn't damage the filter. Then you have your new uh, steel nipple from RevMax. Put that back into your filter. Take a 21 metric and snug it down. There will be just enough lands of that nipple right there. We'll just snug that down. Now we're ready to reinstall that in the transmission pan. We've got our spin on filter. We've got our nipple changed out in it. We're going to go ahead and reinstall it and tighten it up. Watch your threads on here now because you've been in a I've had plastic threads engaged to this, so there might be something in the thread track. So just be aware of it. Take your spin on filter and go ahead and run it up. Make sure that you don't double O ring it. All the good things. I'm going to pull it down, just make sure everything was clean in there because I didn't think I was talking through cleaning up the threads, but I wanted to make sure that we didn't get anything that'll get sucked up and get pushed through our new valve body. So I'm going to go ahead and run this spin-on filter up just like any other spin-on filter. We're going to tighten it hand tight, lubricate your O-ring before you do so. <clears throat> Time to install our sump filter now. And you can see one of the beautiful things about this RevMax valve body is the recess and the channel play here to allow you to use the stock uh, sump filter, which we know is the best filter of all of them. So your, um, your supply right here is angled. So what I do is I'll just get everything kind of evened up where I know it's gonna be going in the recess there. And then I start working the, the stem of that back and forth like so. And then you can see it fits in that recess almost perfectly. Lines up with your T25 screw right here for the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and start that. 
and uh, what we're going to do is just make sure everything is snug and then we'll tighten up our T25 and then that'll have our sump filter installed uh, and then we will uh, come back and we're going to show you the plug for this valve body. We're going to be installing that for this truck where this truck is going to be uh, not going to have trans tuning right out of the gate. We're going to talk to you about the plug. All right, last thing we want to talk about here before we put our uh, trans pan on is we want to talk about the um, orifice plug for you, um, for you non-tuned guys. So like we were talking about this truck, and we want to put this truck through its paces as much as we can before we go into our tuning option or apply tuning to the truck. We're trying out different products as far as this six, seven platform goes, but we this is part of it. We want to do this non-tuned. So we're not doing any transmission tuning or anything like that. Uh, so on this valve body, RevMax suggests that you plug this orifice. So this orifice right here is just a relief, just a pressure relief. Uh, fluid uh, will flow through this for your trucks that are tuned and running a higher line pressure. That is a relief for that. So where we're not, we're going to put this plug in. And the reason why you plug this orifice is it allows you to maintain the line pressure, the commanded line pressure for the stock truck. So we put the plug in there, plug comes with the kit, uh, ready to go. So we've got our plug in now. So now we are ready to put our pan on and start our fill procedure. And the last piece before our truck comes down is our brand new, uh, oh, I've got it upside down, our brand new RevMax uh, deep pan. Uh, RevMax sent this. This does not automatically come with your, uh, your valve body, but we definitely suggest that you do a uh, transmission pan and check the RevMax pan out. Nice thing about the pans is, you know, the theme of this all has been uh, rigidness. You're trying to add rigidity to the case uh, to keep flex away, and a transmission pan does that. This is a super nice pan, thicker walls, um, so it's going to give you a whole lot of, you know, it's going to make the, make it a lot more rigid, but, uh, there's other things to do here. There's a baffles. We've got a unboxing video where we talked about some of the technical aspects of this. Uh, the pan fits with the cooler lines. It fits past everything like that. If you want to, if you want to use a transmission temperature sensor, if you want to add one, you can do it right there. If you don't come to the plug, then you've got your drain, uh, plug right there, magnetic drain plug that we're going to add back. This pan can be used with RTV sealant. They have included a paper gasket for us here, so makes it a little bit nicer. So we're going to go ahead and just put our pan on. So you want to torque your pan bolts to 105 inch pounds in a crisscross pattern here. And torquing the pan down is important because you don't want to overdo it because you'll strip the bolts out. You don't want to underdo it because you'll have a leak. Don't forget to tighten down your drain plug. Do not forget to put your sensor plug in if you're not going to be running a sensor. Last thing we need to do before we bring the truck down is put the uh, main wiring harness on and clip it into the transmission. And then we're going to bring the we're going to bring the truck down. And we just snake it past the linkage rod. We're good to go. Put our lock back up. Now we're ready to bring the truck down. Okay, so truck's down and we've, uh, we're filling the transmission now. So normal service for 68 RFE, if you're just doing um, uh, fluid and, and filter changes is six and a half quarts. The additional RevMax deep pan that we put on here holds an additional four quarts. That's 10 and a half quarts is what the fill is supposed to be. Don't just throw 10 and a half quarts in it and expect that to be good. There's a process for these transmissions on getting fluid in them. And then you've got to be really careful on what you're doing when you're topping it off to make sure that you don't add fluid too fast and cause a cavitation. Cause when you get an air pocket in these things, it's, it's rough to get the fill level right. So what I usually do is um, start out with nine quarts. I put nine quarts in it from the jump. Uh, start the truck, run it for a minute or two, make sure everything's, you know, you don't do anything. You, the transmission will fill in either park or neutral. Park is the easiest way to do it, so just leave it in park. You don't have to touch the gear selector or do anything like that because you really don't want to touch gear selector until you put the truck in quick learning. We'll talk about that in just a second. But um, start the truck up, run it for a minute, 
uh, shut it back down. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and throw my 10th cord in. And then I'm going to start the truck and run it. And then when I'm topping off and getting it to correct fluid level uh, at the cold mark on the dipstick, I'll be doing that with the truck running in park. So I'm going to go ahead and throw off. Um, this little fill um, nozzle that we get, you can get these at any parts house. They're nice because you can turn the fill on and off with that and it works pretty well. I mean, it's less than five bucks for that little fill nozzle and they work just perfect for uh, they work just perfect for doing uh, transmission fluid fills. So we're going to go ahead and put our 10th cord in and then we're going to start the truck up and check it. All right. So what we did as we were filling and checking and filling and checking, it takes time. Um, got it to a point where I was, where I was confident in the level of it. And we have a little bit of time because before you drive this truck, you need to put the truck in, is a quick learn mode. Uh, 68 RFE quick learn mode is going to give you the ability to, well, going to be give the transmission the ability to learn, set the transmission, uh, adapts, um, and, and just basically learn what the new valve body is going to be producing for it. So um, what do you use to do that? Uh, Easy Link is, is probably what everybody's got. Uh, we're going to use our Easy Link right now uh, to put this into a uh, quick learn so you just go to functions go into 68 rfe quick learn resets clutch and, and that and prepare for a new 68 rfe transmission to be added so we just run it and follow the directions on the screen brakes are pressed down all the way engines on transmission oils at medium temperature we have to wait till the transmission gets to 100 degrees before you can run this throttle angle is below a high point no faults present. Vehicle is in park with a parking brake applied. We can begin. Shift lever to overdrive to continue. Move shift lever to neutral to continue. Quick tip on this. If you're doing this with your easy link, you've got to have on the 18, uh, the 18 truck, 17 to 18 up trucks, you've got to have your security bypass cable installed. So when the truck is doing the quick learn procedure, you're going to have a raised RPMs. Now it says shift into overdrive. We're going to do that. It's going to act like it's going to go into a couple of gears. It says shift to park. Quick learn procedure is complete. Drive truck, figure it out. So when you come off of, uh, you're getting ready, you've done your quick learn and all the things, you wanna make sure that before you go out on your initial drive, you wanna check that fluid one more time. So that's what we're gonna do. Adam and I are gonna back off the lift and we're gonna check our fluid level one more time and then we're gonna take it for a drive. All right, so just doing our, our ride along here with our Rev Max valve body. Um, first off, and I, to me, this valve body, no tuning, no nothing, just a RevMax valve body in this truck fixed all of the 68 RFE shifting problems that they had inherently. You don't have that flare on the four, five, five, sixes anymore. It just doesn't feel healthy. Like I said, we talk about this all the time. This truck's a, a 2018, it's got 14,000 miles on it. You drive this truck and you don't know what the rationality of a 68 RFE is before we put this valve body in. And you would have thought that this transmission was slipping. I mean, if you were in tune with automatic transmission, shift strategy, all that, you would have thought it was slipping in the last two gears every time. This corrected it. I can only imagine how this truck is going to drive once we have got tuning in the truck. Awesome valve body, really, really good. Um, I worked with a couple of guys at, at RevMax um, directly on this video and this installation of the products. You all know who you are. Big shout out to you guys. And thanks to RevMax for sending us this valve body. Love it. Absolutely love it. The Quick learn procedure. Uh, you know, if you've got Easy Link or you've got the uh, ability to use a scanner to do this, um, you know, super simple. But the truck is uh, a whole different truck. I mean, it really did. Adam made the comment as we were driving along. He said, "Man, it feels like we put a completely different transmission in this truck," uh, and he's 100% correct. So, you know, we want to make sure that you uh, understand how much 
how important it is to watch your fluid level in this when you get this job done. If you go with you on your ride along, come back, check your fluid level. Remember what the difference between on the dipstick between the hot side and the cold side of it is. You know, it's a it's a you know about half an inch difference in fluid level. So once we get back, trans is at a 131 degrees now. We'll be inching back up that stick. So uh, yeah, yeah, everything's good. Everything's good. Really, really enjoyed it. Um, this was the building block. The first thing that we did for our transmission was our RevMax uh, HD valve body here. We're gonna move, we're gonna continue to move forward. We're gonna put a converter in the truck um, uh, and all the things and just try to build building good 68 RFE. So RevMax valve body, we are a humongous fan. If you are tired of shifting problems that you're having in your truck, this is first step to trying to correct that. So. If you have a question about RevMax products or anything else that we sell, just give us a call and thanks for watching.